In this session, we will show you how to create organization units within DHIS2. Specifically, we will cover the creation of organization units, organization unit groups, and organization unit group sets. We will also describe the fields that are within the organization unit maintenance application within DHIS2. While there are quite a few fields, we will be focusing on the mandatory fields. That is, those fields that you must fill in every time you are creating these individual items. We will then link these concepts with analysis outputs, showing you how their creation eventually links with your final output in the different analysis applications. Let's get started with the session. In this demonstration, we are going to show you how to create organization units within DHIS2. In order to demonstrate this concept, we are going to use a blank DHIS2 database. This database only has one root organization unit. We are going to add to this particular organization unit hierarchy using the principles that we discuss in this demonstration. In order to manage organization units, we'll go to our apps. Now we can either go to maintenance, which is the application that we see in the apps menu. We can also search for organization units directly. In the organization unit app, we can then go ahead and add our organization units. In this DHIS2 system that we're using for our demonstration, we only have one root organization unit. Let's go back to training land in order to show you the eventual output that we're trying to achieve when we create all of these organization units. So here we are in training land. We should be quite familiar with this hierarchy from the other examples we've been using. You can see that there are a number of organization units created within training land. These organization units are further grouped together, just like the example that we discussed in our presentation. These groups are also grouped together into group sets. We want to go through an example where we create our organization units, group them together, and then group these into group sets. Let's go back to the blank database and show you these steps. So here we are back in the blank database. In order to demonstrate how we create organization units, we are going to use a sample organization unit hierarchy. In this particular hierarchy, we have four levels, the country level, the provincial level, the health network, and the healthcare provider. We want to add our individual facilities and other administrative units as defined by this particular health system structure. If we look at one example, we have Canada created in that database already. We want to add the province of Ontario, the three health networks of Erie St. Clair, Toronto Central, and Waterloo Wellington, and then the nine facilities belonging to those individual health networks. Let's go through an example of adding these organization units within DHIS2. We will start by adding in Ontario as the province, Erie St. Clair as our health network, and Windsor Regional Hospital as our healthcare provider. Back in the Organization Unit Management app inside DHIS2, we are going to add a new organization unit. In order to do this, note that I have the very top root organization unit highlighted in this orange color. With this highlighted, we can go ahead and click on the plus sign at the bottom corner. This will allow us to add in the organization unit. There are a number of different fields that are available when we add a new organization unit. Let's go through and discuss some of these fields. For starters, we can see that there are three mandatory fields, name, short name, and opening date. These are denoted by the star next to their name. Every time we create an organization unit, we must fill in these three fields. The name at the start 
denotes the name of the organization unit. We can also give this a short name if required. The code field allows us to assign a code to the organization unit. This can be particularly useful if a master list of all the organization units in the structure we're replicating is available. We can use these codes to match with that particular list and potentially match with other systems that are using the same code. This code field will be discussed in further detail in other academies. In the description field, we can also add a description of the particular organization unit. We also have an opening and closing date. The opening date allows you to indicate when this particular organization unit opened. If it's something like a facility, we can indicate the date that that facility opened officially. The close date allows you to shut down organization units. Using the health facility example, if the facility closes, we can indicate the date that it closes in the close date field. We also have an additional field to add in any additional comments that you may have about this particular organization unit. We can also add in a URL that will link to an external source. For example, if you do have a master list of facilities handy, you can always link to it using this URL field. We then have some fields that allow you to add in the contact details of the person responsible for that particular organization unit. Using our facility as an example again, we can add in the details of the person who's responsible for that facility, along with their address, email, and phone number. We can also manually add in latitudes and longitudes of our organization units. This is most applicable to point type data, like a facility. There are different procedures to bring in boundaries for administrative layers, like provinces or districts. That will be discussed further in the Customization Academy. So if we scroll back up to the top, we see that we have three mandatory fields that we need to fill in. This includes our name, short name, and opening date. Let's go ahead and fill these in now. Note that the other fields will be discussed in more detail during the Customization Academy. We'll start by entering the name. The first organization unit that I want to enter is my province. If you remember from our example, the province name is Ontario. So let's go ahead and enter in the province name. For the short name, I am going to use the code for Ontario within Canada. Note that we could also fill this code in in the code field if we desire. Next we're going to enter an opening date. We'll click on the opening date field and this will bring up a calendar. This allows us to choose the opening date of this particular organization unit. As this is a province, we can't consider a true opening date like we could for something like a facility. We'll just select a date that is as far back as we can go. Once I've selected the opening date, you can see that it populates that particular field. Now that I've filled in these three fields, I will scroll down and click on Save. See that the organization unit has appeared directly underneath Canada. This organization unit lies at the second level in our hierarchy. We can coin this as the provincial level. You can see if I click on Ontario, there are no organization units present. The next level underneath Ontario that I want to enter in are my health networks. In our example, there are three health networks. Let's enter one so we can enter some facilities at level four. Let's start by entering in the Erie St. Clair Health Network. With Ontario highlighted, we'll click on the plus icon and we'll enter the details of this particular organization unit. For now, I'm going to keep the short name and the name the same. We then select our opening date, and here we might have a more well-defined opening date. 
This could be the date in which the health network was defined. Once we filled in those three mandatory fields, you can go ahead and click Save. You can now see that a little triangle appears beside Ontario. If I click on this triangle, I can now see the Erie St. Clair Health Network. If we want to add a facility to the Erie St. Clair Health Network, we will click on that health network. With the health network highlighted, we can now add a facility. Remember, in our example, we had three facilities belonging to each health network. So let's go ahead and add Windsor Regional Hospital. With the Erie St. Clair Health Network highlighted, we'll click on the plus icon and we'll follow the same process as we've been doing for the other examples. We give it a name and a short name followed by our opening date. In this particular case, we can select the actual opening date of this hospital. As before, once we filled in the name, the short name, and the opening date, we can go ahead and save the organization unit. Now we can see that next to Erie St. Clair, we have that little triangle icon appear. If we click on it, we can see that the facility has been added to the Erie St. Clair Health Network. I'm going to go ahead and add in the remainder of this hierarchy using the steps that we've shown in this demonstration. And then we'll come back and look at adding in organization unit groups. If we expand the organization unit hierarchy tree, we will now see the entire organization unit hierarchy reflected in DHIS2. We can first see the country level. This already existed when we started this example. Next, we can see the provincial level. This was the first organization unit that we added in this particular example. If we expand the province, we can then see the three health networks. And underneath these health networks are the health service providers that belong to these networks. This organization unit hierarchy was created entirely through the user interface. 